Hi, I'm Marv, and this is my presentation for you, Duncan, on my work placement at Radio Winchcombe. I've been developing a show called Night Train, and this short presentation is going to try and give you an idea of the scope of the project and also some other volunteering work that I hope has enriched my work for Radio Winchcombe because it's all related to music. I am an artist, I'm a painter and cartoonist, and I got into radio during lockdown. I worked day and night teaching myself the technical skills to learn how to drive my own show at Radio Winchcombe. I took a break in the first semester at Birmingham City University because I found the academic work incredibly hard. But by the time the work placement came round, I figured that I could plunge straight back in and make it part of my university studies. So I'm really grateful to you for allowing me to do that because I really love doing Night Train and I really have a deep affection for Radio Winchcombe. Radio Winchcombe has a studio just next door to the church, about a few doors down from me. It's a small town of 4,000 people, but they do have an online channel as well. So we do get quite a big listenership. And compared with the other presenters at Radio Winchcombe, I get the highest number of listens on my Listen Again uh, sort of clock on Mixcloud. So I'm quite proud of that. Um, if my face weren't in the way, you would see F-List Radio. That was my community radio project for Siobhan Stevenson. And amazingly, it became a reality because Vic Bain of the F-List, who I've been working for for a couple of years now, has decided to apply for an Arts Council grant to help me continue with Night Train, providing it plays a number of female UK musicians, which I do already. So it's a natural fit and hopefully it'll come through. You'll see the design I did for Night Train from the start. It was always associated with my Border Collie Bandit. Winchcombe is a dog loving town. And also I've always loved, loved the HMV uh, dog listening. And I feel that more than half of radio work is listening. So here uh, there are a couple of screenshots of um, Helen Walker, who's uh, a Bolton Lancashire singer, songwriter. She's a gentle, self-effacing woman who does marvelous work. She's a classical composer as well as a pop singer songwriter in the tradition of the Beatles. And I talked to her from her studio in Bolton. She's so behind the scenes and self-effacing that it's quite rare to get an interview with her. She was so pleased with my interview that she put it up on her SoundCloud site. This is an interview I did with Vic Bain, who's the founder of the F-List. She started the F-List in lockdown, so a little bit like me with the radio. And she started it because she kept speaking to festival organizers and events organizers who couldn't think of a single female musician and she couldn't find a proper list. So she developed the F list as a directory of female musicians and it's now up past 5,000 members. It's free to join and it's become not just a directory but an organization that champions the rights of female musicians. My show Night Train has always featured female musicians, but as I get more and more involved with the F-List, of course, I'm privy to an amazing array of talent, and I often get pre-releases from female musicians who have gotten to know me over the past uh, couple of years, and, and I've intensified my work with them uh, thanks to some of the training at Birmingham City University. Um, in social media, so I've been a little bit more adept at it. My experience in radio is, um, objectively speaking, quite limited. I started in lockdown, so I only started in September 2020. I'm self-taught. I have an awful lot to learn, but I have had a, some experience during that time. I've worked um, day and night, really, 
and uh, certainly nighttime. Um, and I even done some daytime work. The daytime work was at BBC Radio Gloucestershire and at Scratch Radio, though I quickly switched my slot to an evening slot. The Mind Station work I'm doing now is pre-recorded shows. I'm due to deliver 60 pre-recorded shows before the 23rd of May, which is why I'm going to be submitting this assignment a little bit early, as it coincides with the official deadline for this assignment. My main work has been work on Night Train. We, of course, don't have producers at the community radio station. Um, so uh, I produce and uh, cook up my own shows and present them. And I also train other, um, other presenters now, technically. I've, I've just jotted down uh, a few of the, the volunteer jobs I'm doing in conjunction with Night Train. It's all running simultaneously, and I think each is feeding into the other. So although it makes me extremely busy, I think in some ways it makes me more efficient too, because a lot of uh, the research is taken care of by a lot of the other work, say for the F list for music, and of course um, for BBC Radio 6 music, I listen to um, a lot of new music. Um, and act as a moderator. There's a team of moderators, all really interesting people, um, a lot of them musicians. And so I feel really honored to be part of that team. We all work for Tom Robinson, though not directly with him. I work for a musician called Toby, who's an electronica musician. So he's sort of my contact. Um, uh, so I don't, don't want to give the impression that I'm working intimately with Tom Robinson. I'm not, but it is for Fresh on the Net and, and Sometimes our picks um, get as far as BBC introducing in the sense that it, our choices can coincide with Tom Robinson, who humanly is just, it just wouldn't be possible for him to listen to all the music that comes out each week. Um, the Guiding Music Festival is a really interesting event that takes place 10 minutes away from Winchcombe, so it qualifies as local music but it's really a world stage. And so I've been covering that and really acting effectively as a PR for the Guiding Music Festival. I've, I did a whole show, for instance, on Tom Seals, who's appearing at the Guiding Music Festival. And I have a, an interview with Joe Harmon, the jazz singer songwriter coming up soon. I have a few skills that I think feed into my radio work. One is writing. Uh, I love to write, and um, I, 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 I always write down certain phrases that, that feel just right uh, to keep my links between the music as brief as possible. Uh, I've, I've published books before, and I studied literature and poetry and, and art, so I, I try and feed all of that into to my radio and to make my links more interesting. Research, I do love researching. I love it a lot. And I spend a lot of time researching each show and not just new music, but I also read stories. I get original research done to, to make original links and tell stories that um, haven't been heard before. Uh, so it can be new music or music from the past. In terms of presenting, um, my voice is, I think, best for late night radio. A lot of people have said this. They think that it's it's soft and it's calm and it's reassuring. But I have to say that there's a bit of a surreal side to me, and that really comes out late at night. Listening, well, I really love to listen. And um, my friends joke that um, when I'm not talking, I'm very quiet. Juggling is good practice. Well. I say that because along with Radio Winchcombe, I've been working for F List for Music, helping to network, helping to spread um, the word of, of events. They hold a lot of regular events to help musicians. And I've also been working individually with musicians to help find funding for them. It's also given me a chance to give my feminist uh, uh, 
convictions uh, are, are a, a chance to, to, to be put into action because I really feel that a lot of female musicians have been overlooked or un unjustly underrated and they tend to be a little bit less bold in promoting themselves. And so I really think there's a place for radio to help them out and help them be heard and give them the dignity and just give them justice, you know, the justice they deserve and spotlight them and give them the in-depth interviews and time with their music and music they love um, to to really present them with um, as much um, Oh, as much depth and attention as they deserve. Uh, BBC Radio 6 Music is a much more intense practice. Um, it involves listening to a, a huge amount of music and a short amount of time and making good choices. I could never have done it without my experience over the last couple of years with Radio Winchcombe, listening critically and drawing up playlists thoughtfully. The Mind Station is a big surprise. It's run by Colin Dobson Fox, who uh, developed a big audience on YouTube and also on Amazon Prime with his um, Britain by Narrowboat series. He's a very imaginative, very professional, very experienced radio DJ as well. And so he's come full circle and he's starting a radio station called the Mind Station online devoted to mental health and he's listened to Night Train. Uh, it was a very competitive process, but he he really wanted Night Train and is really delighted that I that I'm um, willing to to jump in. And uh, he wanted it nightly originally, but I couldn't manage the nightly assignment. So I'm starting with two nights a week. There's a soft launch uh, the 23rd of May with an official launch in June. He's willing to adopt Night Train exactly as it is, as he put it, um, but it's just a one hour show instead of two, but that's more to do with my workload than his preference. So potentially it could grow into a nightly show if I can handle that, but I need, feel I need to build up to that. Academic and professional battles. Well, this is really just observing the industry and understanding better where I stand and where Radio Winchcombe stands. It seems that it distinguishes itself best as a community radio station that allows presenters total creative freedom. I should say that not all presenters use the freedom that they could potentially um, be using. A lot of them still play the top 40 hits or oldies. I like to try and do something a bit more original, a bit, a bit more, um, sometimes a, a bit uh, riskier maybe, and I think that that's paid off. The surprise to me is some of the neighbors in Winchcombe, some of them old, quite old. Uh, one uh, neighbor I'm thinking of who's 85 years old, he is so forward thinking and so insightful and has such a natural wit. He has no formal education. Um, and another um, person I can think of, um, same thing. Um, he uh, didn't have a chance to go to school. He's a farmer's son. Both of them just love Night Train. So I f really feel very strongly that it appeals to a wide audience, not just educated, not just younger, not just older. It just seems like there's one of each, like Noah's Ark, and each one counts equally to me. It matters as much to me that David Simmons next doors or Peter Bartlett, the farmer's son, love, love Night Train as it does, say, Vic Bain uh, loving Night Train or Colin Dobson Fox. Um, in fact, I would be heartbroken if I lost um, those local listeners. Uh, Commercialization has led to, of course, I don't need to tell you this, but has, le has need to, uh, led to uh, autumn automated, uh, pre-programmed playlists. Um, uh, I've, I've given the academic sources here, including a really interesting writer called Alkvist, uh, who, who co-wrote an article in 2000 and in 2020 as well. Um, and he observed and quantified a lot of the pre-programmed 
um, automated uh, shows, especially in the US, and even uh, predicted the use of AI and robot DJs in the future. So essentially, I'm trying to do what a robot can't. Um, I've tried to make the most of creative freedom with sound effects, atmospheric effects, um, quite wild choices in music, and it, I think it's really paid off. Um, and having a two hour show allows me to have a B side in that second hour. So I'm really against uh, playing just the same old, same old pop hits. Um, and as for the feminist theory, well, it's a pleasure discovering so much talent. I think there's a renaissance in music in the UK right now, and I think women are leading the pack. The radio industry is changing. I like to think that there's a place for me. The Tim Westwood case highlighted this for me. I think there's a need for more ethical DJs, DJs who listen and tune in and respect their audience. And when female musicians, for example, want you to listen to their music, not to take advantage of their trust, of their, um, their need, and uh, to treat them, treat them with respect. And uh, this is something that, that it appears Tim Westwood did not do. Seems like he exploited his power and the BBC didn't intervene when it should have done. And to me, it's a Savile-esque tale that reminds us that we really need to throw out these um, power hungry DJs and replace them with people like me. The BBC license fee, well, the BBC license fee really calls into question what the BBC actually does as opposed to what it professes to do. I've witnessed in Birmingham just how they pretend to have the door open and yet shut it so fast and leave town so fast. I really don't believe that they're interested in changing the rules of their ostensibly private club. This is my impression of the BBC. I really think that that an extension of that is that the BBC has lost touch with its audience. Podcasts versus live radio. I feel that podcasts are so exciting right now that the only chance radio has to compete is to keep the humanity in radio, to keep it original, to keep it sensitive, to keep it responsive. Otherwise, we might as well be podcasting. So I'm, I feel I can offer a fresh new approach to radio, mainly by featuring female musicians, giving them front, front and center stage. This just gives you a sample of some of the response I've had from bands and musicians. Many of these bands and musicians I've reached out to or I've included their music in Night Train, but others have um, started to take an interest in Night Train partly because of the support from the F list and the recent announcement that I'll be involved with BBC Radio 6 Music, which I think honestly has made people sit up and pay attention in a different sort of way lately. In any case, I'm working hard on social media because Radio Winchcombe itself doesn't promote its programs. So I feel that you have to be very um, self-reliant and a self-starter when it comes to promoting your shows. I've produced nine shows since January 2022, each two hours long, and it's not just playing records, it's stories, interviews, and original research. I've also, apart from Radio Winchcombe, prepared around 20 pre-recorded shows in preparation for the Mind Station pre-launch on the 23rd of May.
So the key right now will be how to monetize the work that I'm doing. Thank you, Duncan, for your support and for your flexibility and allowing me to concentrate on night train Thursday nights, late Thursday nights and into Fridays. The editing takes a good part of Friday and early evening and then into Friday night to promote on social media after the editing is done. So it's been invaluable to be able to conserve my energy to concentrate on, on the work placement. So thanks for that. Really appreciate it.